everybody welcome back to the channel today we're going to go over basically the new events that occurred today on the pre-stream go cast the level one go cast um basically what transpired is whoever was going to be buying phil this fucking pc basically pulled out giggity and phil is now left without the new pc and you could tell he's pretty fucking salty about it. Um, but we're going to take a listen here. And then afterwards, we'll go into just what can Phil do in the meantime? And it's pretty fucking obvious, but we'll go over it here. It's not going to be a long video, but let's just give this a listen to. Um... Dead air, Phil. Dead air. Is this condo association telling him to get the fuck out? Hold on, I got an email. Just reading it quick. Okay. Nothing important. Got distracted, but it wasn't an important email. Every once in a while, I get an email from, like, the condo association or something. I'm like, I better read it just in case it's important. It wasn't important. Okay. <laughs> um, Let's talk about what we've been talking about all last week. And this week, we really haven't talked about that much. Upgrading my PC. Okay? If you remember, we two weeks ago, I had a video that corrupted. And when it corrupted, I got frustrated. And I was like, guys, this is annoying because now it seems like this corrupted video thing is happening every couple of weeks. One of the videos I record corrupts for some reason. I don't know what's causing this. It just started about two months ago. And it's been an on and off thing that's been happening now pretty much every other week, okay? And it's very frustrating because when a video corrupts, now i got to try to figure out a way to get that video online. It's not easy. Um, and, you know, we talked a little bit about, well, maybe it's time to, to, to realistically get a new setup because this PC is eight years old. The stuff starts to wear out. I use it every day, right? So last week, every single morning on the Level 1 Podcast, we talked about PC components. We talked about ideal state. If money wasn't a factor, right, what would I realistically need for a rig that I would want, right? And we talked about future-proofing it, so not only getting exactly what I would need for today, but also future-proofing my setup so that it could do more in the future, yada, yada, yada. You know, we spent the whole week doing this. We got the whole setup, the lineup, all right? So then finally, after a week of talking about it, um, got to the point where it's time to price it out and see what it costs. Well, basically pricing out everything that we figured out that I would want for my new setup. And by the way, that doesn't even include a new webcam. It's basically the PC alone to upgrade. You know, CPU, GPU, RAM, hard drives, capture device, power source, motherboard, etc., etc. Okay? To be able to get what we talked about would cost around anywhere from two thousand dollars to maybe twenty three hundred but you also have to factor in tax and shipping so when you really factor in everything you're essentially talking about a twenty five hundred dollar rig okay very pricey right i mean yeah for any computer that's pricey but it would give me exactly what i want full 1080p smooth 60 frames per second every game that i capture i'd be able to do a high definition webcam and or camera also as the face cam over that as well and it wouldn't really affect it it wouldn't downgrade the quality <clears throat> and essentially i would be future proving myself so i wouldn't have a lot of problems moving forward okay would it do full 4k i mean i don't know how well it would do that maybe it would have the capability of doing that but i'm not really too concerned about that at this point okay i'm just capturing streaming full 1080p 60 frames no matter what game i'm playing the level of detail and being able to do a webcam or face cam over it that was my concern all right now, also keep in mind, if we did that upgrade and I got a better camera, now maybe we could dabble in other things in the future. For example, a green screen, etc. Although, admittedly, when I talked about that last week, a lot of people were kind of like, nah, green screen's not a big deal. We like your setup now. It was one thing when you were just sitting on that love seat with a blank background and it was boring as shit. But now that you actually have an interesting background, we actually don't mind having you that stuff behind you. So, anyway, it is what it is, okay? So, that's what we determined. Now... I've been telling you guys that all along this process, I had someone who was interested in basically financing 
the purchase of this new PC. Um, this is someone who I trust, someone who I've known for a while, and someone who, you know, it wasn't like, oh, I'm messing with Phil or whatever. It's not a troll, because that's what people were saying. Oh, it's a troll fooling Phil. No, that wasn't the case. It's not the case at all. Okay, it's someone who I trust. So, once we got all that data last week, all right, sat down, gave the data to the person, and we've been talking basically for about a week about it, about what can we do. Well, admittedly, the person is didn't have that much. They're not like, man, I could just drop $2,500 on a PC. That wasn't the case, you know? I think the budget was more on, in line with between maybe 1000 and 1500 So what we started to do was see, okay, if we were to downgrade a few of the components that were future-proofing, so, for example, do I need a 3060 Ti or 3070 graphics card? No, I probably don't. I'm not going to game on this thing, and that was never the intention. You could probably downgrade the graphics card a bit and save some money. Do I really need the 32 gigabytes of RAM? Probably not. I probably just need 16 for now, and then in a few years, if I feel like 32 would help, then I could buy it myself and install it. That's one of the easiest things you could do on a PC is upgrade the RAM. It's very simple, and I know how to do it. That's not a big deal. Same thing with the graphics card. We were talking about, oh, let's get a 4K graphics card. Am I going to be capturing and streaming at 4K? No. We were trying to future-proof, but again, if you're basically trying to get to a situation where you can, it's affordable, just get the 1080p graphics card and save yourself money. So basically, we were like scaling back. What can we get in range with what would be a more reasonable price point? Okay, And we were actually working on this for a few days, and we were actually looking at a few sites that had some pre-built rigs that were very close to what that would have been. We actually had found like a site that was around 1400 or something like that. And the problem was we look at it, we're like, oh, this looks great. And then we were going to maybe get it. Oh, it's in Germany. Oh, shit. Well, guess what? How much it costs to ship a computer across the planet from Germany? <laughs> it ain't worth it. <clears throat> okay. Um, so essentially, this is an ongoing process. Well, I got some bad news. Okay. I talked to the person yesterday, and they were like, well, they got bad news. So basically, something went wrong with some of their own equipment, and now they have to buy expensive equipment that they did not expect to have to buy out of nowhere. And because of that, they don't have the money right now to finance the PC. And I was like, well, that's life. I wasn't disappointed. I wasn't upset. Like, that's life. That shit happens all the time. You never know when something's going to go wrong. Um... I personally have experienced this over the years. All of a sudden, one of my monitors just dies out of nowhere or won't turn on right. Well, now I got to drop a few hundred dollars on that, and I wasn't expecting it, you know? And that's kind of what happens. So, in this case, um, it is what it is. I, 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 In reality, it's a good thing that I didn't really rush into getting, a, uh, you know, this PC. Because actually, it might have put this person in a really bad position, which I would have felt really bad about. So, I'm glad that we didn't kind of, like rush into it and then oh shit then there okay shut the fuck up phil all right so my theory on this as to why the person original ice cuck pulled out my personal theory is he's fucking with phil right oh i see plays both sides he plays the detractors and then he plays the dents and you saw this in Agent Proper's stream, right? Like, he promised that he wasn't going to support Phil anymore. And then he just ended up supporting Phil more. Um, he stated on Agent Proper's interview is that he had put $1,500 away for this new computer. Now, of course, Phil wanted start things off was a $3,000 computer. Then it went down to $2,500. Then it went down to $2,200. Because Phil was just like, he just wanted the best, right? Even with the $3,000 system, you're not gonna, that's not gonna buy you the best. But, for what Phil really needed, and we've gone over that over the prior videos, Phil doesn't need, he barely needs to spend a thousand bucks. Anywhere between a thousand and fifteen hundred is what Phil needs. Phil really doesn't like that, you can tell. And, of course, the way Phil speaks in this in the GoCast this morning, basically he's guilt-tripping the person that was going to, say, finance. And I love how Snow Carl here, if you can see it, Snow Carl states that, why don't you co-finance it? Right? Like, that would be the dumbest fucking thing to do 
in the first place, depending on, because Phil ain't going to get any financing because of his bankruptcy and his fuck all credit. He ain't going to be able to do that, period. Now, I spoke to Peace of Peace today and I asked Peace, you know, what was Phil's total income paid out by YouTube on July 21st? And Peace's estimates are around 46 K, so 4,600 bucks. Now, it could be more, it could be less. I don't know, right? More than likely, it's more. Like the estimate, I th- like Peace said in the past, is it's on the low side. So factor in Phil's uh, payment from YouTube and how much he got from Patreon that he scammed people on Patreon for. That covers all of Phil's expenses for the month. That's all his bills, electricity, internet, gas, waste removal, his mortgage, uh, his car payment, his cell phone payment, et cetera, et cetera, right? That, that covers all of that. So in tips... Phil's probably going to clear another five, six thousand dollars. We know that for a fact. Okay, it's in the DSP tips tracker, and with that, Phil basically can afford the PC on his own, right? There, there's just if if he wouldn't blow all that money on WWE and DoorDash and Jin. All he would have to do is probably save his tips for a week. And then he has enough money to buy his new computer. But what can Phil do in the meantime? All right. So we've we've said this before. There is nothing wrong with Phil's current computer. Plus, he has an Asus backup desktop, as we've seen in the video, the, the condo walkthrough and how messy his fucking office is. So we know he has two functional computers, not counting the two notebooks and the supposed lemon PC sitting in the uh, closet, which just has to have the RAM replaced. And like Phil stated, he can replace RAM easily. He knows how to do it, but yet he went and spent $3,000 on a CyberPower PC. Okay? Now, if you look at your screen here, on the left-hand side is a layout of Phil's motherboard. And what we're going to do is we're going to play devil's advocate. Okay, let's say there's something wrong with Phil's system, okay? Now, we know what hard drives Phil has in his system. So on the left-hand side is his motherboard. As you can see, he doesn't support any NVMe or M.2 SATA. His system is just too old. It was before that became available. But he does support SATA 3.6 gigabyte. So he has an ADATA. SSD. Okay, now we know for a fact that Phil does zero maintenance on any of his stream hardware. That's vacuuming vacuuming and dusting his room, making sure the cables aren't strewn throughout the fucking floor and everything is running correctly. He doesn't clean the computers. That means he doesn't dust them out. He doesn't do regular maintenance like running trim on the SATA drive or running a defrag on the backup drive. He doesn't update drivers. He doesn't update Windows. He doesn't update any of his software. Case in point, just a couple months ago, he updated his OBS, which was six years old at the time, and he had no clue what to do. So he doesn't do any maintenance whatsoever. So over the years, the computer is going to slow down. Now, Phil states in the unboxing of the CyberPower PC that he has Windows 8.1 Pro 64-bit. Phil in, like I've said in a prior video, that Meerkat did, Phil stated that he had upgraded the Windows 10, he had fucked up his landscape view on his dual monitor setup, and he needed help to fix that because he couldn't figure out how to do that, although it's very easy just to right-click, go to display properties, and choose landscape. Phil was too dumb to do that. So Phil updated the Windows 10. So we know for a fact that he is probably running Windows 10 64-bit Professional Edition. So he's already got that set up. So what Phil can do, say there's an issue with the SSD. Now, this goes for any SSD manufacturer. So say you're using Samsung. You go to the Samsung website, you go to Tools and Software, and you download the Magician software. The Magician software can then scan your SSD or your NVMe drive. 
and it can tell you if there's any issues or if it's in good working condition. You can also use it to update the firmware, and you can also use it to run what's called a secure erase. Now, if you have a SSD or an NVMe drive, you should never format the drive manually. You should never run a disk part on that drive because it's unnecessary writes. It's going to kill the cells faster within the hard drive, within the SSD, within the NVMe drive. What you want to do is you want to download the software and there will be an option for secure erase. Now, secure erase can be created onto most of the time onto a USB key. And then what you can do is you then boot off the USB key. It boots into, we're going to look at Phil's thing here. It's eight at his SSD toolbox. And it'll boot into DOS or it'll have its own GUI system set up for UEFI. And you can run a security erase. Now, this completely wipes the drives clean, but doesn't do unnecessary writes, which can kill the cells faster. This is the way you format an SSD or an NVMe drive. Again, never format, never disk part, and never run a check disk on an SSD or an NVMe drive. You will kill your drive faster or lower its lifetime. Now, Phil can do this, okay? This is his Windows drive. So Phil can just download Windows 10 64 because the system doesn't support Windows 11 because he doesn't have TPM 2.0. He can still install Windows 11. There are workarounds to do it. I've done it on many systems and it works just fine. But all he has to do is download the Windows 10 media creation tool, run the software, let it download, create a USB key for him, and then he has a Windows 10 install. Doesn't have to worry about activating it because he's using an already online activation for Windows 10. So as soon as he connects to the internet, it'll automatically detect and update. He'll be fine. So on the ADAT, that's all he needs to do to wipe it out using the security race utility. Now, more than likely, he has a Seagate 3 terabyte 7200 RPM SATA 6 gigabit backup drive. Now, this functions a little bit differently than a SATA drive, of course, or an NVMe drive. He would need to download a program called CTools, which is available on Seagate's website, and it can run a low-level format, or you can just disk part it. Now, if he wants to check the drive because he stated that he's got bad sectors on it, he can run a check disk slash F slash R, and that will fix and repair or attempt to fix and repair any bad sectors. Now, it will take some time to run because it is a 3 terabyte drive, but this will detect any bad sectors on the drive. The C tools will actually run diagnostics like smart tests, shit like that. And it'll tell you if the drive is failing. If it comes back clear, then you're okay. There's nothing wrong with the system. Now, if Phil was having, say, smart issues with the, not only in his brain, but within the computer, when the computer boots, it always runs a smart test. And if it errors out on boot, then yeah, you, there is definitely something wrong. But that could also be down to a bias issue. Phil can then use these tools. He can update his firmware on his SSD for ADATA using the SSD toolbox. And he can also update the bias on his X79. And I guarantee he's never done that. He's never done that on a Sabertooth board. So if you look on the left-hand side, Phil has 6 gigabit ports. These are the SATA 6 gigabit. Now, hopefully he's not using the Marvell portion, which I believe is number is number 10. He shouldn't be using that. He should be using 8 and number 9, which is the integrated Intel SATA 3 gigabit. Okay? That's what he should be, or number 8, actually, sorry. He should be using the serial ATA from Intel. Have that correctly plugged in. If he's not using that, he's probably slowing his system down. Uh just based on the fact that he's not running the 6 gigabit. I've never seen the inside Phil's PC, so I don't know what it looks like. Phil would be way too dumb to understand that. Now, that's what he can do to fix his computer. It'll cost him $0. All he would need to do, wipe out both drives using the security race and the low-level format utility on his backup drive, or he can just run a disk part on his backup drive, because that's what disk part is meant for. Now, when that's all said and done, reinstall Windows 10, reinstall the software, copy your overlays, reset up your OBS. But again, Phil doesn't actually know how to do that because it was all done by Rambo in the past. So going that far for Phil 
would be an issue. But he needs to take it a step further. He needs to clean those systems out. Because remember, like, he won't do any maintenance. He's never opened them. So they're probably loaded with fucking cat hair, dust, like, you name it. So you need to take, like, an air compressor to it. Just wipe the system right out. Clean it right out. Now, he would probably need, I know we were talking about this on Meerkat's uh, Discord today. He's probably going to need to replace thermal paste, which I would love to watch Phil fuck up. Because I guarantee you he destroys the system. He'll, He'll completely brick it. Because he'll put thermal paste, he'll put too much on, it'll all ooze out the sides, and the thermal paste he'll buy, he'll walk into like fucking, I don't know, Fry's Electronics if it's still a thing, and ask for some thermal paste, and then they'll give him some thermally conductive thermal paste, and it'll just blow up the system, it'd be great, be fucking wicked to watch. But this is the cooler Phil has on his system. This is the Frio OCK from Thermal Take. It's a piece of shit. Okay, it's only got a copper base, and then the rest of the thing is aluminum. I like it to be all copper, but whatever. It's loud, it's big, it's clunky. I wouldn't put this in the system, but that's just me. He would need to reapply the thermal paste, remove it, put thermal paste on the CPU, reseed it, just to keep it cool. Now, doing this wipeout of the complete of the entire system would fix his issues. 100% it would fix his problems. Because he's never done any maintenance, and because CyberPower shipped it to him right out of the factory, it's probably preloaded with a lot of junk. And knowing Phil, he's probably, from all the porn and shit that he jerks off to, he's probably got Norton installed, McAfee installed, Avast installed. He's probably got everything running in the background. So this will completely wipe out the system, and then he can start from the base software. Windows, OBS, use fucking Microsoft Security Center, right? Security Essentials for the antivirus. It works just fine. And then it's got him back up and running. Guaranteed, it would improve performance. Not just like, we're not talking like, is it going to improve his stream quality? No. And him getting a new computer is not going to increase his stream quality either. Okay, that's that's not going to happen. It's going to look exactly the same as it does now. If he installs the camera software, again, I don't know what camera he's currently using, and he doesn't want to let any of this information out because people will just laugh at him. He can install the software for the camera so he'll have better lighting, he'll have better color gradient. Everything will just be nicer. Now, if he wants to get a new capture card, by all means, he's got PCI Express 3.0 on the Asus Sabertooth board. He can get a new uh, capture card still. That's not difficult to do. Uninstall the drivers for your old one. Unplug it. Plug in the new one. Again, he can go with the Avermedia. But again, he's going to have to go with the 4K variant because the 4K variant allows for 4K pass-through. With Avermedia, if you go with the 1080p capture card only, it will only do 1080p in and 1080p out. He has to get the 4K capture card. Even though he's not going to be capturing in 4K, he's going to be outputting a 10 at 1080p. He needs the 4K one because it just won't do 4K pass through. So instead of it passing through at 4K, it would end up passing through at 1080p on his TV. Now, if you read the input one here, 1080p 60 HDR, that's really not a thing. 1080p 60 HDR, it's 8-bit HDR at that point, and you want 10-bit HDR. 8-bit HDR is just SDR. It's just how they've renamed it to make it sound better. Or you can go with the 4K 60 Pro from Elgato, the MK2. The ones here on the top left, the first three, are just USB external ones, which work perfectly fine. Or he can do pass-through right with this and it'll do 1080p capture for k60 capture and it will do 4k60 pass through it will not do vrr but face it phil's tv doesn't support vrr even though he was plugging it there about you know vrr you know playstation's playstation finally got vrr xbox had vrr but phil's tv doesn't support vrr therefore the vrr doesn't work so those are this is the cheapest option for Phil at this point since OIC is no longer going to buy him this fucking computer and 
he refuses to put money away himself to buy the computer, although it would take him probably about a week in tips from all the fucking dents and the whales. He can have himself a brand new PC right now, but he's not going to do that. He's going to sucker whoever is going to buy him this PC. So now there's a big fucking fundraiser, which again, you can't do on YouTube because it's against community guidelines and TOS unless you're a charity. And again, Phil mentioned about crowdfunding. Again, crowdfunding is not allowed on YouTube as per the TOS and the community guidelines. So Phil is stuck between a rock and a hard place at this point, right? He desperately wants a new PC, doesn't want to pay for it himself, doesn't want to put any money away, and is refusing to fix his current setup, even though it is perfectly fine for doing 4K60. All right, so that's today's fucking pre-stream goat cast. Phil is no longer getting the new PC. He doesn't want it. Do it himself. He's waiting for somebody to buy it for him, or he's going to beg hard over the next couple months. So just a little bit of some maintenance here on my own. This Friday, I'll be doing the restream for Fight Night. Um, depending on if Rydrake, probably Rydrake might do it as well. Piece of Piece will probably do it. Um, and might do a little bit of it on Twitch. Uh, I'll be holding that. And then Saturday, I am going to start, I think, doing, trying to do what like Raw DSP does and uh, Dark Dave Mirrors. And I may try to set up a daily restream during the day just so people have somewhere else to watch as well. Um, Saturday for the Gautathon, I'm probably going to hang out with Shinko. I know Shinko wants to go over and he wants to tally up. Basically, uh, everything. every single time DSP pulls something out of his closet, we're going to tally it and try to find out the MSRP of how much it costs when Phil first bought it. Now... All this is going to prove this Scoutathon is that Phil has wasted money over the last 10 years, like tons of cash, on shit that he's never used, shit that he was never going to use, and that he just splurged on because Phil has a spending problem. Uh, so we're going to tally that all up. Now, Phil wants to make it out that the detractors and the trolls, they want us to see that Phil's going to release some personal information that shouldn't be out there. No, we, we we really don't give a fuck, Phil. You've already fucked yourself up enough with the bankruptcy, with the tax issue, with WWE champions, with all the shit that went on here over the last week when you got caught actually playing WWE champions on stream. So your secret's out, Phil. It's been out for a while. You can't run from it. You can't hide from it. All right. So I'll see you guys Friday night. Thank you to all the new subscribers. If you like the channel, please subscribe. If you like the video, please hit the like button. Leave me a comment. If you have questions on any computer hardware for yourself or you're building it for a friend, give me a holler on Discord or drop me an email. The email is in the About section on the YouTube channel. Everybody have a good night. And again, I'll see you on Friday.